Unit Commissioning Notes It is forbidden to directly connect the compressor with power supply and forcibly power it on during debugging and maintenance. Debugging must be performed on the GMV5 system before operating. If the GMV5 system are not in debugging, the main board of outdoor units display module address 0FA0 and that of indoor units display A0. An outdoor unit must be set as master module and only one master module can be set during debugging. An indoor unit must be set to master indoor unit and only one can be set during debugging. Please keep the factory settings if there are not special requirements. Debugging can be performed even when the wired controller is not connected. It can avoid damage on the wired controller. Preparation for debugging. Make sure that the following tools are prepared before debugging. Make sure that the debugging software is correct before debugging. Make sure that all required files and parameters are prepared. Check the system before debugging. Check the installation environment. Check the appearance of the units. Check the refrigeration system. Check the electrical system. Check the installation environment. Please check the heat exchange environment and electromagnetic radiant components, etc. All checks should comply with local standards. Check the appearance of the units. Please check whether pipeline installation complies with specifications, whether refrigerant pipes and condensing drainage pipes are thermal insulated, whether communication cable complies with installation regulations, etc. Check the refrigeration system. Before debugging, make sure that the cutoff valves are fully opened. Check whether the any oil leakage around the valve. Check the electrical system. Check for high electromagnetic interference, dust and acidic or alkaline gas in the operating environment. Check the surface of power cable. Check the power capacity required for the unit. Check the installed air switch model, fuse model, and their using methods. Check the components in the electric box. Check the input power and check power for consistency. Check phase sequence after powering on the unit. Measure whether the val value of power supply is normal. Check communication system. Before debugging, make sure the communication cable and power cable are connected correctly. Debugging process. Precautions before starting debugging. Before starting debugging, make sure the unit compressor has been preheated for more than eight hours. Check whether the preheating is normal by touching the compressor. Debugging can be started only when preheating is normal. Otherwise, the compressor may be damaged. When debugging is started, the system will select an operation mode according to the ambient temperature automatically. Before starting debugging, make sure again that the cutoff valve of the outdoor unit have been completely opened. During debugging, the front panel of the outdoor unit must be completely covered, otherwise debugging accuracy may be affected. Before debugging, Make sure that additional refrigerant charging to the system has finished completely for more than 70%. Introduction of debugging methods. GMV5 provides two debugging methods. One is to perform debugging through the main, main board buttons of outdoor unit. This method doesn't need specialized tools and can be performed by engineer on site. There are three pairs of LED indicated information. LED1 shows the debugging code, LED2 the debugging process code, LED3 the debugging status. 
The other is to perform debugging through professional software. In this method, connecting computer is required, but the debugging process is intuitive and real-time detection of operation parameters is available. Debugging through the main board buttons. Completely cover the front panel of the outdoor unit and open debugging windows of all basic modules. In power off status, set the outdoor unit to a corresponding static pressure mode according to the static pressure design requirements for outdoor. For more details about the setting method, please read the installation, debugging, and maintenance manual. If there are not static pressure requirements, keep the factory settings. In power off status, set one outdoor unit as master unit by keeping its SA8 dip switch in 00 factory setting status. Set other modules as slave modules by setting SA8 dip switch to 10. If centralized control is required, set the centralized control address SA2 and power off status of outdoor unit. Retain the master module address setting of one system in 00000 status. The centralized controller addresses SA2 of other systems master modules cannot repeat. You could retain default settings for slave module and it's not needed to set the slave modules SA2 dip switch of all system. If centralized control is not required, you could keep the default setting, and it's not need to set the dip switch at all. Power on all outdoor units and indoor units. If LED display A0 on the main boards of all outdoor units, it indicates that the unit is on the non-debugging status. Find the master unit with its address of 01 on the master unit. Press confirm button for five seconds to begin debugging. Wait for the unit to operate debugging step one and zero two automatically. If the master module is incorrect, error code CC or CF will display on the LED three. CC means the system does not set the master module. CF means the system has more than two master modules. When a master module has been set successfully, LED3 will display OC and it will enter step 02 automatically. If not, master indoor unit is detected in step 02, LED3 will display error code L7. In this case, all outdoor unit buttons are temporarily not functioning. Users can set the master or indoor unit through the debugging software, wired controller, or remote controller within one minute. If no master indoor unit is set within one minute, the system will set a master indoor unit automatically. Then the system enters the next step automatically. Step three is to confirm quantity of outdoor unit. If the display quantity is consistent with the actual connected units, the unit enters step four automatically. If the displayed quantity is inconsistent with the actual connected units, power off the outdoor unit and check whether the communication cables are connected correctly. Then perform debugging again. It is very important to confirm the quantity of the outdoor units. If the confirmed quantity is inconsistent with the actual quantity, the system may run improperly. Step 04 is to confirm the quantity of indoor units. If the displayed quantity is inconsistent with the actual connected indoor units, please press confirm buttons to enter step 5. If the displayed quantity is inconsistent, please check whether each indoor unit is powered on and then check whether communication cables are connected correctly. It is very important to confirm the quantity of indoor units. If the confirmed quantity is inconsistent with the actual quantity, the system will run improperly. 
Step five is unit internal communication and capacity matching detection. If the detection is abnormal, the unit will retain the current status. The errors could be C3, communication failure between master unit and fan driver, C2, communication failure between master unit and compressor driver, CH, rated capacity ratio between indoor unit and outdoor unit is too high, CL, rated capacity ratio between indoor unit and outdoor unit is too low, C2 or C3 appear, please check whether the internal wiring and the main board are in good condition. If CH or CL appear, please increase or decrease indoor unit quantity to ensure the ratio is within 50 to 135%. If LED3 displays OC, the unit will enter the step six automatically. Step 11, the step six is outdoor unit, electric component detection. If the detection is abnormal, the unit will retain the current status. If the detection is okay, OC will display on LED3 and the unit enters the step seven automatically. Step seven is indoor unit, electric component detection. If the detection is abnormal, the unit retains the current status. The LED three displays the four digit project number of the faulty indoor unit, and the corresponding error code will be displayed after three seconds. For example, if ambient temperature sensor error occurs in Indoor unit number 16, LED3 will display 00 firstly, then display 16 and display error code DL. In this case, please confirm whether connection is correct or replace the sensor until error disappears. If the detection is okay, LED3 should display OC and the unit enters step eight automatically. The step eight is compressor preheating confirmation. If it is detected that the compressor's preheating period is less than eight hours, error code U0 will be displayed. Therefore, please preheat the compressor in advance. If it is detected that the compressor's preheating period is more than eight hours, the unit will enter step nine automatically. If preheating period reaches eight hour while the unit shall be powered off, the power off period should not exceed two hours. Otherwise, preheating should be arranged again. The step nine is about the pre-startup refrigerant confirmation. If no refrigerant is in the system or the refrigerant amount does not meet the system startup requirements, error code U4 will be displayed. The unit cannot enter the next debugging step. In this case, check for leakage or charge refrigerant. Till the U4 disappears. If the refrigerant amount meets the system startup requirements, the unit will enter step 10 automatically. The step 10 is pre-startup. Outdoor unit valve status detection. If LED3 of master module displays on, it indicates that the unit is being enabled. If LED displays U6, it is required to check again whether the outdoor unit valves are open completely. After confirming that all valves are open completely, press confirm button to enter step 11. In step 11, the system verifies refrigerant charging amount. This step needs no operation, just for indicating refrigerant charging amount. The step 12 is unit debugging startup confirmation. Confirm again all preparations are completed, then enable the unit to debugging process. If LED3 of master module displays AP, it indicates that the unit is waiting for ena enabling confirmation. If it is confirmed to enable the unit, press confirm button. LED3 displays AE and the unit enters the step 13 automatically after unit startup confirmation, the system automatically selects the cooling or heating mode according to the environment temperature. If LED3 of master module displays AC, it indicates that the unit is in cooling mode. If LED3 of master module displays AH, it indicates that the unit is in heating mode. In unit operation, it will detect the action status of each electric component and pipeline status, etc. 
If everything is normal after the unit, continuously operates for 40 to 60 minutes. The system confirms debugging completion automatically. And then all units will stop and restores the standby status.